Hello everyone, my name is Vito Kortbeek. I will be presenting our work that has reasonably been accepted to ASPOS 2020 named Time Sensitive Intermittent Computing Meets Legacy Software. So first let's set the scene. Batteries are bad. There are a lot of IoT devices and there will only be more and more that will be flooding the market. There is an estimated 41 billion IoT devices by 2020. And most of these will operate not from a wall plug, but from batteries. So another estimate is that by 2025, over 11 million tons of spent lithium ion batteries will flood the world. So this is of course very bad, but let's not only think about this as a environmental pr problem, but also who will replace all of these batteries? Because it will basically be a full-time job just to replace all batteries that were spent. So what's the solution to this? One of them is to remove batteries altogether. But then how do we get this energy? Well, energy to run our systems, we can do that by using energy harvesting. So with energy harvesting, we take energy coming from multiple sources or one source, but the most famous one is probably solar, but it can also be something else such as radio waves, interactions, or even the vibration caused by motion. Our goal is to power a subset of the IoT devices which require very little energy, and this can be done with the small amount of energy which is produced by this energy harvesting. And normally you could store these in, for example, a battery, but then we still wouldn't remove the batteries. So what we want to do is store these uh, harvested energy into capacitor. This has downsides. Uh, the energy capacity of a capacitor is usually way less than that of a normal battery. Systems on a battery can operate for months, sometimes a year or more, but on capacitor powered energy, this can be way less, especially if we want to have a small capacitor. Here, the capacitor charge might only last for less than a second. What does this mean? This means that for certain harvesting situations, the energy that is produced and then consumed this cycle can happen multiple times a second this also means that the system will reboot multiple times per second this can be seen in the figure over there the on threshold is where the capacitor charges to whenever this limit is reached the system will turn on this is the light blue square and then it will deplete all the energy that's available to the system after which it has to charge again now, the time it takes for the capacitor to charge really depends on the environment and on the harvesting techniques. Think, for example, what happens if a cloud comes, then the solar will generate less energy, or if it's vibration, how fast a person runs, if that's causing the vibration. This can all influence the charge time. The actual on time of the system, the light blue squares, is also affected by the system because that depends on how much energy the system is consuming at that point. The takeaway from this is that there are a lot of variables involved and that can be difficult to create a system that will operate under these environments, these multiple reboots per second. So there are some systems that try to solve this and these can be categorized in three main categories. Checkpoint based, these are systems that run, for example, in the volatile memory and then every time a checkpoint is made of the program with its current location and all the current information, that's required to, if the system reboots, restore all this information and continue. Uh, the downside of these systems is often that they have a considerable amount of overhead because not all variables actually have to be stored and restored every time. It's only the variables that are actually changed. Uh, this is addressed with task-based systems. These are not task-based systems as you would traditionally see them with logical tasks. These tasks are created purely for their energy consumption. So you'll have a certain system or you'll design a system where all of these tasks have a certain energy budget. And you have to guarantee when designing your task that this task will complete in any case on your system. And these tasks are then linked together, but because these tasks are basically small subsets of idempotent regions, they, the added overhead of saving variables is smaller because you only have to say, um, 
make sure the task transitions are correct. Then lastly, you have compiler-based systems. These try to attempt to create these idempotent regions as well, but they do it on an instruction level, either with the intermediate representation of the, of the compiler or with the actual instructions of the system itself. And here comes also the difficulty. The thing is that often compiler optimizations are done on the intermediate representation, which not, does not necessarily align with the actual architecture, instruction set architecture. So all of these systems try to solve the same thing, which is consistency. If you would have a simple system that just takes their volatile state and saves it into a non-volatile medium, in this case, we're assuming that all the systems have access to uh, non-volatile memory, as in RAM. In our case, it will be ferroelectric RAM, FRAM. Uh, if all this state, volatile state is then copied to the non-volatile medium, you don't have that many issues. But if you consider a mixed system where, for example, the variables themselves, so the actual memory locations are non-volatile, but the location in the program, so your registers, is volatile, which is the case in all current systems, then if you start manipulating these non-volatile memory locations, say variables directly, but you do not every time store the exact location of the program, you can have inconsistencies if you write a variable after you read them. This can be seen in the middle figure where a variable is updated, is first read, then updated, and then before a next checkpoint happens, which basically stores the location of the continuation of the program when it reboots, it will die and it will restart. Now the variable stored in this case len is in non-volatile memory, so it will keep its value, which it was after the update. And now it will attempt to update this value again. So this can lead to inconsistencies. This is a very simple, explain, uh, simple example, but this is a very basic problem which can happen and can be rather difficult to overcome. These violations are called write after read violations. And a simple way to say what you need to solve is that you have to make sure that every region within checkpoints is idempotent. There are also uh, some other uh, consistencies that have to be taken into account, such as uh, time consistencies. This is especially the case for us because we also want you to be able to reason about time. We want uh, a time to be able to be connected to a variable, for example, so they're only used when it did not expire yet. This can be useful for sensory information where you don't want to waste computation cycles if the information you get it and you want to process is not valid anymore because a certain amount of time has passed. So we try to provide these abstractions to the programmer in our framework. So then we get to our framework. So our framework is called TIX, it's Time Sensitive Intermittent Computing System. So what we want to do is support the general C language. This includes global memory, pointers and recursion. Some of these are often uh, ignored when creating earlier systems. So we want to take just C programs, S is, and we like to convert this to intermittent application with as little modifications as possible. We do not want to create tasks. We do not want you to move around your memory so you don't have global variables. We don't want you to eliminate all pointers. We just want you to use normal C, which developers are used to. So the transition to developing intermittent applications is as small as possible. We also provide a constant checkpoint size. This is because we employ something called stack segmentation. So we have our stack, which is split up into multiple blocks. This is also how we accomplish a low overhead while working on the current active working stack, we call it in the paper. Uh, here we can freely manipul manipulate any data and only if that is actually committed, the then operations on this data will, in, uh, will endure some overhead. For more information, I would like to direct you to the paper. So additionally to that, we also uh, checkpoint on memory changes. So memory growth and shrinking can also introduce a checkpoint. This is additionally to the checkpoints that can, are caused by, for example, timers, if you want a periodic checkpoint strategy or uh, voltage measurements if you want to connect it to a certain hardware that 
has uh, the information about the voltage level of the capacitor. And additionally to that, lastly, we also introduce time-based decision-making, which can be connected to the variables. So how does the system look in its whole? We have our C code, which we can optionally annotate with time information. This is only if it's uh, wanted by the programmer. This is not necessary at all. Then the, this code is instrumented. This means that the timing information code is parsed and translated to normal C instructions. And also, this means that all uh, global and pointer data, pointer manipulations, are also instrumented. This is to uh, allow pointer manipulations and global manipulations freely. Uh, after this is instrumented, it will go, the new C code, which is still valid C, will go into our modified compiler. This modified compiler is instrumented to support the stack segmentation methods we employ. They are similar to normal stack segmentation, but uh, different to fit the needs for intermittent computing and to double buffer memory, for example. So all these uh, are linked together with our memory management library for the global data and the pointer manipulations and the checkpoint library to glue everything together, the timely execution libraries, and of course the sec uh, segmentation managements. This will create a executable, which can be uploaded to, in this case, our uh, chosen microcontroller and will create a intermittent application. So a little bit more about the actual implementation of TIX. We have our runtime and our compile time procedures. So code is instrumented and the compiler modifies function entries to allow for stack segmentation. This is all done at compile time. But additionally, to support everything, we still need some runtime components. So the basic runtime components are memory logging for uh, global variables and pointer manipulations. So this is a simple undo log system. And then next to it, we have the stack segmentation management to make sure the double buffering of the stack segmentation is all done correctly. Uh, all this manipulation, all these memory locations live in a non-volatile memory mapped uh, memory. In this case, on our system, which is the MSP430 FR5969. This is a microcontroller that has integrated on board uh, FRAM. This is ferroelectric RAM. And therefore we chose to uh, utilize this microcontroller because it has it on board and it has a very low power consumption also while accessing this memory. We evaluated our system by comparing it to some existing systems um, the ones shown here are all uh, task-based systems. For more comparisons and more details about the benchmarks, we would like to refer you, refer you to our, uh, the paper. But what we can see here, the main takeaway is that our system compares equally to existing systems out there while providing more support for normal, normal C application, embedded C, without the need to rip your program up into uh, energy-based tasks, which can be rather difficult to reason about. So comparable overhead and more programming freedom, we would say. Um, for more clarity, what we can see here is the plain C, which is just normal C you would run on your microcontroller. Then the green bars are our system with different configuration. ST is where we perform a checkpoint at the task boundaries of the blue cases, which are the first three, Inc, Alpaca, and Mayfly are all task-based systems, uh, where the tasks are then sectioned up. So we perform a checkpoint at that point. And then Naive is a system where we checkpoint the whole memory region instead of using our stack segmentation methods and memory logging. So that's the most naive way where you just take, this is all my memory space, volatile in this case, and we just copy everything to non-volatile and move it back whenever we read it. Uh, some concluding remark on our system. So we presented a C compatible intermittent framework called TIX that includes time-based decision-making. So all of this is also publicly available, both with the DOI link on Zenodo and on GitHub. 
and uh, thank you for watching this presentation.